Hello, I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Today on Personally Speaking, I'll be joined by the great actor Chris Conroy, who starred in a Super Bowl commercial just three months after having brain surgery. Please stay with us. Welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and actor Christopher Conroy joins me now. Chris grew up in a small town near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and although he was successful as a student athlete and playing basketball for St. Joseph Catholic High School, Chris decided to forego a basketball scholarship to pursue a degree in filmmaking at Point Park University. Chris then decided he wanted the challenge of being in front of the camera. Some of his film credits include The Congressman, and recurring roles on Blue Bloods, the Emmy award-winning series, Mr. Robot, and God Friended Me. In 2018, after feeling unwell for some time, Chris experienced a splitting headache that he described as having the intensity of a 20 out of 10. Chris was diagnosed with a brain abscess caused by an infection, a potentially life-threatening condition. After his brain surgery, it was also discovered that Chris had endocarditis, a bacterial infection of the heart. He was treated and was discharged from the hospital five days after his surgery. His recovery process remarkably took just two months. Less than three months after his brain surgery, Chris was back in front of the cameras. He booked the Mercedes-Benz Say the Word commercial that ran during the Super Bowl. Chris is here to tell us about his experience, about the faith and the values that sustain him. Joining me now, I'm so pleased to welcome to Personally Speaking, the wonderful actor Chris Conroy. We are here with Chris Conroy. And Chris, um, let me ask you a fundamental question. Sure. Diane, Diane and Kevin, the folks oh. who, who made you, what yeah. did they do right in your life in raising you and your brothers? Uh, well, let me just first by, uh, let me first say that please don't ask me any questions aside from this one that could get me in trouble with my mother. <laughs> that would be, that would be terrific. <laughs> um, great, uh, great question. Um, well, I think that uh, family and and morality was the backbone of the Conroy family at large. Yeah. Um, uh, my parents were, were there for just about everything in my life. My dad took me to basketball practice. He took me to basketball games. We shot hoops. He made sure that I did great um, with sports. And my mom sort of was there for the school aspect of it. Uh, she helped us with homework, with art projects. Um, my mother um, became, she wanted us to go to a Catholic school so badly that she became the art teacher just to, <laughs> af just to afford paying for us to go there. Wow. Um, she also made sure that we hung out with the right people um, yeah. and that and that we had sort of a, a, a community. I mean, luckily I have a huge family. My dad's one of six. My mom's one of four. Okay. Um, and so putting us whenever they couldn't be around, which was almost never, but when they couldn't be around, putting us in the, in, in the hands of people who cared about us as much as they did. Yeah. Um, like my mom would even, and I wanted to go out on dates when I was 15, she'd be like, well, uh, I'd like to call her mother. first." <laughs> and I was like, all right, I don't want to go out on a date at all now. But, but, uh, <laughs> no, but she, um, she, uh, you know, she screened straight, them. She screened them for she, you. She was a lot of screening going on, <laughs> a lot of screening. And so my, my dating life early on was a little scanned, but that's all right. Um, but no, she, uh, she, um, she was strict, but loving. And, um, mm. I think, uh, I think that's, what's given me the discipline that I have to, to do what I'm doing right now. Well, that, that's um, a perfect segue because what I yes. wondered is when you're protective parents, and thank God they were, yes. um, you want your kids, all your kids to be solid, have a steady income, a job you can count on, maybe a pension, mm -hmm. something. You go into the arts. And, yes. and, and Chris, that, there's, there's no promises in the arts that anything no. is going to work no. out. So how did they yeah. respond when you said acting? Uh, they were a little surprised because I didn't go to school for it. Mm -hmm. um, I... I did one play in high school. 
uh, I had the, the smallest role. And <laughs> <laughs> every night I walked out on stage, I like forgot all my lines. I was like, I wasn't not only not only did I choose a career in the arts, but I chose a career in the arts with like uh, really no talent. I would I would almost go as far <laughs> to say no talent. <laughs> But I had, I had, <laughs> I know a lot of people who come on, they're like, I went to Carnegie Mellon or I went to right, acting right. school here and there. I didn't do any of that. And yeah. so not only did they, were they, you know, a career in the arts is scary for parents in general, sure. but I didn't have like sort of any experience acting. Yeah. Um, I had done one small role on something that wasn't, you know, wasn't substantial. So needless to say, they were, um, uh, apprehensive uh, I'll, I'll say it as a nice word <laughs> um but you know once i once i got the results once i started getting the results then mm -hmm. they 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 went from accepting it and now they're like they're like kind of amazed by it in a way that's that's like pretty pretty remarkable to be honest it's like to well, see the arc of where they came from for our for our listeners and watchers around the country uh, chris is a working actor and that's a wonderful thing yeah uh, chris there's no uh, there's no actor i know anyway who who hasn't uh, gone out for stuff time and time again and not gotten it mm -hmm. when chris conroy doesn't get that opportunity and thank god you have a lot of them yeah how do you deal with uh, disappointment frustration being right for a part and not getting it? what do you do with that energy um i think after a time period you you find a way to care more about what you're doing than the result mm, okay and so when i walk out of an audition i used to i used to keep a box of my scripts and i'd keep them and i'd i'd, I'd hold on to them maybe 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 they'll call maybe something will happen maybe this when i leave now I drop the script into the garbage can and I go on living my life. Good for you. And, and I think that uh, there's something really freeing about that. And again, again, it's taken years to get to that place. <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know, if you care more about, again, you're going to have little disappointments. And, you know, I have a feeling like, oh, well, they made the wrong decision. I'm going with that other guy because I'm way better than him. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, you know, there's, a, of course, there's always that. But um, no, but I think that the not caring about the results and just caring about what you give instead of what you get mm -hmm. is a process. But it's one that like, it's what's it's what keeps you and it's what keeps you in anything. Uh, yeah. as they call it in sports for love of the game. And if you have a love of the game, uh, you know, if you don't get roles, you just kind of move on and, and, um, you know, you, you, you get it another at bat next time. You just kind of, you kind of have to build thick skin. You know, of course that happens. Chris Conroy was in a movie called those people, which my hundred year old mother and I watched and, oh, yeah? uh, and, and you, you were fine in it, but then there's a add on to the movie with the extras and the extras has the director showing us that there was a whole other plot line that you were in with your girlfriend. Oh yeah. And, yes, and, and right. that didn't get included in the final no, film. No, no, it didn't. And I'm saying, how do you, when you've done the part and you know, you're good in that section and yeah. then they don't, they don't include it. Like, did you kill the director or what? <laughs> no, no, no. He was great. He was great. He had a he had a vision for that project, and you know he expressed to me. I mean, I got the scene obviously, so right. I was I was fine with that. But he had a vision for the project, and he wanted to keep it focused. And and um, you know, what do you what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> so what okay. Do you, what, what, what do you what do you do? I mean, I've had I've been you know series regulars and and a number of pilots. And, sure didn't get picked up and it's like you know again you just you just have to find this place of uh you're in a marathon yeah you're you're you're, you're in a mar you're in a marathon and i and i often look at it as like this is just another chapter in the book mm. that i will eventually maybe write maybe right, not right but it's another chapter in the book that makes the story more interesting and i've had plenty of things along the way that that are those and so like whether it's the brain surgery or other things mm -hmm. but um yeah i just think of it as another chapter in the book and i am in the dramatic arts so uh losing ri rising from that having disappointments having great moments that's all part of the dramatic arts so i like all of it because uh 
without those experiences, I don't think I'd be able to be good. Right. So it inform it job. informs your whole life, including your art. Okay. Now, yeah, Chris yeah. just mentioned for our listeners the experience of the brain surgery. Mm-hmm. So Chris goes through this experience of not feeling well, having it checked out. First of all, I wanted to like hear yeah. your story. I want to like punch you. He gets really sick and he decides instead of going to the hospital to go home and rest for a while. Not a good idea, Chris. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> for our listeners out there, if your head yeah. is throbbing and you're throwing up, go get some help. Don't don't yeah, take a yeah. <laughs> if your head feels like it's gonna explode out of out of the top, then maybe maybe it's time to go do something about it here's yeah. what i was wondering hearing the story um you know because you have been raised in a, a faith-filled family when mm. something like that which easily could have killed you when something like that happens oh, yeah. do you go through a uh you remember on broadway there's that song why god why um did, did you do you question like what are you thinking lord why give this to me and tell us a little bit about the background of how it happened yeah, I uh, uh, one day out of the blue, I had what I would describe as a twenty out of ten headache. Yeah. Like, I was walking to the gym with my with my best friend who lives in my building now, and he, I was like, man, I don't, I don't think I can go work out today. And so I was just, and I never do that. And he could kind of see something was up. So I go home, I lay down, I try to go to cryo. I did other things other than rest. I tried to go to cryotherapy. I went to city MD. I drank liquids. I was avoiding going to the hospital at all costs. And then I took some, then they said I had the flu. Then they said I didn't have the flu. Nobody knew what was going on that night. So uh, I took some, I took some um, anti-nausea medication and flu medication. And I said, if this doesn't feel better in four hours, Uh, I have to go to the hospital. And so my buddy walked me over. I went and within a couple hours, three, I'd say at six in the morning, the neurosurgeon's PA walks in and goes, you know, he does one of those things where he like sits down. He's like, Hey, and I'm like, Oh no, (laughs) they have to sit down. It's never good. They they have to sit down. It's never good. And he goes, so you have a large mass about the size of a golf ball in your brain. And I was like, Ooh, what? Really? (laughs) Like 30, 30, 30 years old or whatever. Right, right, right. Um, And so, you know, I was in denial a little bit and then he was just like, Hey, it just is what it is. And, um, uh, yes, of, of course, of course, there's, of course you have those thoughts. And again, I, I, I've been through a lot in my life to the point where I'm just like, it's another thing. It's mm-hmm. just another thing to add to the, to the storyline. And within, you know, they told me I'd be out in a couple weeks. I got out in like three or f- maybe four or five days. Wow. Um, I was back in my, I'm part of an acting group, an acting program. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was back there the next week and I performed a scene like with on my crutches. Like I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to let this even be a thing. I, I would walk into auditions and, you know, I had an ear to ear scar yeah. and I'd walk into auditions and casting directors who had just seen <laughs> me like three weeks before, like, oh my God. God, what, what happened to you? <laughs> and I'm like, and I and I just say, what, what do you mean? <laughs> like, ignore, really, ignore that scar on my head. <laughs> I just played it. I just played it. Like, you know, I just didn't want them to think about it. Yeah. Because I didn't want anyone to think about that more than what I was doing. Yeah. And so, and so, believe it or not, I think that that I healed much faster. I healed. I healed much, much faster. And so, uh, yes, of course, I had the. I've had many why God, why me moments. Yeah. And, and I'm just I, go ahead. And he and he never he, he has not yet parted the clouds and said <laughs> Here's the reason, Chris. And said, Hey, <laughs> my son, uh here are uh, all here, the answers. Yeah, here here's an envelope. It explains everything. So <laughs> and, that, and that'll be that. Now what what struck me too for our listeners and watchers is Chris then figures he's in the hospital, they're gonna open up his brain that let yep. me call mom and dad he calls mom and dad mom and dad are in church and can't be reached They're in church yes 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 yeah they why can't god be why <laughs> they can't be reached and so i called my younger brother greg and i was like can you please let mom and dad know that i'm having a craniotomy and he's like oh well, what <laughs> how do i spell that right yeah 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 exactly exactly so so luckily i was in the hands of a great doctor who like followed up with my uh with my parents with my brother and um 
and uh, all of my family members. And by the time I was out of surgery, they were already on a bus on their way to come and see me. So it, it worked out just fine. Chris, but, here's, uh, something, here's yeah. something about you I wanted to celebrate because I think it's a wonderful dimension of your personality. A number of my active friends over the years have had health issues, and but they always say to me, even with an interview like this, we're not going to talk about it and certainly don't tell people that I've been sick because I want to keep getting jobs. You not only have been public about it, but you've like uh, you've even promoted the wonderful hospital and the doctors who yeah. are so good to you. Yeah. I, it, I just think it's it's terrific. You're saying, yeah, I was sick and I got better and it's because of these people and I want to give them public praise. Like, 100%. What, what went into your thought about that? That was kind of, I think, heroic. Uh, heroic? Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that, Monsignor. I really do. <laughs> okay. um, I uh, I think it's because I, I, I think it's really because I got better. I mean, that was, yeah. that was, re that was really it. I don't, I don't use when things like this happen, there's such a clear way to look at it, which is, which is I can use this as an excuse, mm -hmm. which is like, I can use this to say, Hey, I'm sick. I, you know, I, I have brain problems. I have, I have titanium in my head. Like I obviously wasn't cut out to be on camera or an, as an actor. And then on the other hand, there was like, this is, this is the rocket fuel to become better. Yeah. And I, I've always managed to look at things like that. Um, and I think it's again, a, a product of my upbringing and a product of very few, well, not very few, but a number of great people along the way who have helped reinforce that. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it was like, I think first it was obviously it started with my, with my family. And then I had one teacher in high school. He's probably going to love this. If he watches it, he probably is <laughs> like, I didn't expect to be talked about but uh mr <laughs> mr shebel his name is wayne shebel okay and he was a latin teacher who was like so hard on me but it's because he cared yeah because he cared he's an english and a latin teacher i took latin for four years Ooh, that was <laughs> and i'm the Ooh. priest how come you took latin and i'm the priest yeah, 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 yeah. what's up with that yeah. what's up with that that's a if question you, you gotta ask yourself yeah. you know? but, but if yeah. you decide to play a priest you're already yeah yeah that's true i've auditioned for priests along the way well i was a, i was an altar boy and a, I, I was in the choir and i was a lector in mass for many years wow come yeah. to my parish come on come yeah. on <laughs> how far is it how far is it well be um, beautiful long island beautiful long yeah island. yeah <laughs> Yeah, but uh, um, and I've had I've had various people along the way who have been um, who've been hard on me in the right ways. And it's mm -hmm. just because they cared. And I kind of had that luxury when I moved to New York because I got introduced to, you know, again, I didn't have a leg to stand on when I moved here. I had I had under a thousand dollars and yeah. and um, uh, I had no no nepotism to come from. I had right. no acting background. I mean, I had an education and I had a good family, but um, I met an acting coach up here who kind of, we clicked because, because of a lot of the stuff he said really resonated with me. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of how I got my, my true career got started. So I, I was a little bit lost. And uh, I met the, I met the right person and started doing the right work that I loved. And, kind of everything just grew from there. Chris, what I was saying before about your uh, public thanks to the hospital, it seems to me that whether it's your teacher in high school or the hospital, you seem to have, and I guess it's from your parents, a grateful heart. You know what you have, you know what you've been given, and you're yes. grateful for it all, and you let people know, which is wonderful. Now, speaking of being grateful, every yes. Catholic high school in the country is going to come after me if I don't say, was the experience of St. Joseph's High School in Pennsylvania a good yeah. experience for you, Chris? absolutely good yes, yes. <laughs> thank you yes. for that <laughs> yes yes oh, oh they get on you for that oh yeah you know because if somebody's had a good experience you know uh we had on before an author and he was raised catholic and then he comes out in the middle of the interview but now i'm an atheist i don't believe in anything i'm saying okay this is not the way i thought it was going to go <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's okay we welcome atheists too you'll appreciate yeah, yeah. this yeah. Ed, ed asner the wonderful actor of course he's on the show and i said to him at one point uh, it says in your biography, you call yourself an atheistic Jew, but you're also 92. So I'm just wondering, at 92, are you still an atheist? And yeah. he says, well, let's just say, Monsignor, as I get closer to the end, I'm hoping you people are right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, of course, of, of, of course. I, I, I um, you know, I, I sort of grew up with religion and, and uh, I think as a young kid, I was just like, okay, I just need to accept 
accept that this is true accept god right. there's a lot of accepting and just being like this is the way it is and you just have to believe it but as i've gotten older um uh i i, I sort of have like a, a push and pull relationship with it in many ways like sure. i look to a lot a lot of the stuff is from the from the old testament a lot of the stuff that i like um like uh, jacob's wrestling with god for yeah example. yeah 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 i feel many ways like that um okay. and and what was what i find so interesting about that story in particular is that jacob was a formidable opponent it mm. wasn't just like it wasn't just like god was like all right fine i, <laughs> I flick you off you're done he was a formidable opponent and so right. in many ways i feel like um uh uh i wrestle with the ideas and, and i think that that's kind of i think that that's kind of the point mm -hmm. um um and also you know to tie in more religious stuff like i was always kind of interested in some of the earliest stuff in the in the old testament in genesis which talked about out of the chaos out of the nothing god created yes god created man in his image god is a creator right and yeah. so um i became obsessed with like sort of reconciling my career and that stuff and because i'm in the creative arts mm -hmm. and if we are called to be more like christ to be more like god yeah. i am called to do be a creative person as well and yep. so i love this idea of out of the nothingness out of the chaos god created good mm -hmm. and i think in many ways that's i i use that in my acting final question i promise yes. chris then we're going to let you get on with your day when we had uh on the the, sh the television show that we do we had Derek cheater and i said to cheater um you know every american kid wants to be a successful baseball player popular money you got it all um but why of all the kids in america a billion kids who want to be Derek cheater why did god give these things to you and and Jeter said uh, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to ask him. I don't want him to change his mind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, exactly. so, so exactly. Chris Conroy, you've been given a lot of gifts, many gifts, many talents, many abilities, as well as good personality, good values. Why did God give those things to you? I'm not going to steal Derek Jeter's answer. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I think that, I, I think that, I think that if there's one thing I was given, um, most it was uh stubbornness mm -hmm. competition and like i guess fortitude would be the right word right. um because i don't think i didn't i didn't grow up with a, with a natural knack for acting um i didn't grow up with a natural knack for the arts like even in film school i went to film school i was average maybe I was okay. My films were okay. Um, but I always had a reaction to it and I always wanted to be better. And I think that the gift that I have is sort of the, I won't stop till it gets done. Good. Um, why, why I don't, I mean, I'm, I am going to steal his answer. Why? I don't know. Um, I could, I could take it back to my, I could take it back to my parents to some degree uh, and, and my, and my upbringing. I mean, I was always taught to keep my word, yeah. do the right thing, mm -hmm. stand up straight, mm. and all, and always get back to it. And you know, some of the people I've met in New York have like continued that sentiment. And uh, I guess, yeah, I've, I mean, I think I think it's luck. I think if you end up in these positions, unless you're like really gifted. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is like I was lucky to have a pretty great childhood. I was lucky mm -hmm. to have met the right people in New York. Yeah. And I, I was lucky enough to be born with a certain like relentless stubbornness to just do it until I got it. You are, and, you are tenacious is what you are. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I yeah. want to thank Chris Conroy for being with us. Um, he's he's a great actor. You'll see him. Look him up online. Between yeah. TV and films and commercials, he's a working actor, which is wonderful. But yeah. I hope today our, our viewers and listeners got to see that he's also a man with a grateful heart who doesn't forget to say thank you, who appreciates where he came from and the people who formed and shaped him, loves his parents, loves his brothers, and has tried to use his life to make the world a better place. And it's constantly growing. And even in terms of faith, I love, Chris, what you said about the... Uh, Anybody who says they've never wrestled with doubt um, is probably yeah. not looking in the mirror and being honest with themselves. Uh, I think any journey in faith has to be that wrestling experience you talked about. So yeah. your, your honesty, uh, you're just wonderful. You're delightful. Thank you for being on our show. I and we, we will have Chris on many, many times in the future because he's he's the man. He's going places, <laughs> you know? And, well, and Junior, <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate that. See, all the stuff you're saying to me now, I'm like, ooh, I have to stand up a little straighter than I, <laughs> than I was. But now the bar, it is, he raised the bar just now. So I really do appreciate that. And thanks for having me on I, I i i like talking about this stuff i like talking about not just about my work but about my life yeah. about my family about my friends and and the values the that the values that you you treasure i mean you're yeah. you're right no, treasure i treasure is the right word and i know that a lot of uh, i know a lot of people say that but i mean i family is is really probably at the top of the list of, yeah. of things that matter to me as we end today's program, I want to thank you all for being with us. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me at personally speaking podcast at gmail.com. To listen to Personally Speaking, uh, the podcast with some of our most recent shows, you should also go to YouTube and search under Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jimlisanti. And don't forget to check like and subscribe. Personally Speaking is also available as a podcast on personally speaking podcast.buzzsprout.com. You can also listen to past episodes by going to www.CloseEncounterTV.com and clicking on the radio button at the top of the page. You can also find past shows and Monsignor Jim's weekly homilies by going to www.OLLMP.org. Go to the homepage, and if you're able to help and support us in any way in our radio ministry, we'd be deeply, deeply grateful. Personally Speaking is also on Facebook at Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Please share and let others know about Personally Speaking. Personally Speaking is made possible with the help of many generous and wonderful individuals. I hope you'll be one of them. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer of Personally Speaking. Our producer is Lisa Jandovitz. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking. Personally Speaking.